morning, everyone, and thanks for joining us for Church Online with Parky Baptist. A big welcome to our regular worshippers, for those tuning in from regional areas or anyone just checking us out to see what it's all about. We're hoping that as restrictions lift in the coming months, we'll be able to physically start meeting together again. But in the meantime, why not check out our Instagram and Facebook pages as we're ramping up our social media posts just to help you keep connected in other ways. Today, Brad will be kicking off our new sermon series from Hebrews entitled Encouragement to a People Dispersed. And we encourage you to do your own reading of Hebrews during the week as we look into how to persevere in the face of persecution. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the blessing of being able to meet together online and for your provision during this time. Please open our hearts to hear what you have to say to us, knowing we can trust in Jesus being the same yesterday, today and forever. Amen. G'day, I'm Colin and I'm uh, looking at some old photos of me and uh, one thing I'll say for sure, I've changed. I really have. And you've probably changed too. And have a look at this. This is a photo of me with my mum. And there I am, a tiny little baby. Then you get a bit bigger. I've got another photo here. This is me, a bit bigger. We were on holidays there. And that's with my dad. And I could feed myself. I was a bit bigger then. I might have sat down, read books and played. And then I got bigger again. This photo was taken when I went to school. I was big enough for school in that photo. I'm not in my uniform, I'm still in my pajamas. And there's another photo here, I've changed even more. Do you think I have? <laughs> I, I've changed. Have you changed too? I'm sure you have. Like when you get clothes out and they don't fit anymore because you've got bigger. But you know, we don't just change on the outside, we change on the inside as well, because some days are good days, and then some days mm, are bad days. And sometimes our friends change too, don't they? Like, maybe we don't get on with friends like we used to. Hmm. And things change around us. Maybe you've moved house, or even had to move to another country. What else changes? Hmm, maybe when someone you love gets sick or has to move away or you can't see them. So many changes. But there's someone who never changes. Do you know who that is? I think you might. All right, I'm going to read a verse from the Bible. It's from Malachi chapter 3, verse 6. And it says, I am the Lord and I do not change. God doesn't change. God wasn't small once and now he's big. God doesn't grow. God doesn't change his mind. God doesn't learn anything. He doesn't get old or die. He doesn't have mm, good days, mm, bad days. The Lord never changes. And because God doesn't change, all he does is good. When he makes a plan, he keeps his plan. And you know what? The Bible says something about Jesus in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. It says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today and forever. Jesus doesn't change. Everything else changes. We change and our friends change, and the world around us changes. But Jesus never changes. And when it feels like, oh, too much has changed, everything's different, remember this. When you are scared, when you are sad, trust God. When you've done something that is bad, trust God. Just think a prayer and he will hear. God always cares. He's always near. His love will never disappear. Trust God. Right. I want to sing a song about how God never changes. Let me see. 
It's uh, from Malachi. Remember that verse? Chapter 3, verse 6. I am the Lord and I do not change. All right, got my plectrum, got the song. All right, here we go. I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. God chose Israel long and long ago. And when Israel sinned, God never let them go. Listen to him. Ready? I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. There are times we feel like we could walk on air, but when that feeling's gone, God's love will still be there. Listen to him. I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall, but the Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. He keeps every promise and his word is true. What he is, he says, and what he says, he'll do. Ready? Listen to him. I am the Lord and I do not change. I am the Lord and I do not change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. The Lord don't change at all. No, the Lord don't change at all. You see, kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. He wisely, wonderfully holds them all. Blessed are all who on him call, because the Lord don't change at all. He doesn't change. All right. I think it's time for us to pray. I'll close my eyes. You can close them too to help us think about what we're, what we're saying as we talk to God. Let's pray. Almighty God, how amazing you are. Your word says you have no beginning and you have no end and you do not change. We praise you because we are weak. We see change all around us. We see ourselves change on the outside and the inside. But you are always the same. So we call on you, our rock and our deliverer. And Lord Jesus, we praise you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever, no matter what. And we pray these things in our Saviour, Jesus' name. Amen. Good. Well, I think that's enough of the photos, so uh, finish up there. No, can we have no more, no more photos? Hey, I said no more photos of me when I changed, all right? No more, no more, please. Whoa, that, <laughs> can we stop? No more, no more photos. Thanks so much for your generosity as a church and wider community in continuing to give during this time. Your donations are helping to facilitate the building of God's kingdom in our online ministries and also as we prepare to resume meeting again in the coming months. If your kids are wanting to share their pocket money to help out the kids' ministry Sponsor Child One, simply reference their separate donation with the word Sponsor Child and it'll find its way to the right place. Thanks again for your contributions in this way.
Hello, I'm out today doing some work in the yard. We had a massive storm the other night and it got me thinking about this period that we've just been through as a church. Storms have a way of just creating chaos in our lives. Just behind me you can see one of these brand new gums that's come down. And the thing for me about storms is it causes unease when it's happening. It seems to unsettle me. And it, it, I worry about the stuff around us, whether we're going to have big trees come down, just branches, or little trees. Another thing about storms that always seems to happen is that it, it, it just changes the landscape. Things are different after a storm. This area of the yard now, where these big gums are, is going to have a different skylight because it doesn't have three or four big branches there anymore. Another thing that storms do is they clean things. They clean things, they, like our, our yard is all scoured now with the wash that came through, the creek that runs through our block, Mahogany Creek, is clean of leaves and sticks. Uh, a massive deluge of water came through here. The last thing that I reckon storms do is they bring the opportunity for new life. You see, um, plants and fruit, and a whole range of trees just seem to take off when they get a good soaking and a good dumping of rain. This period that we've been through has been difficult. It's been a storm. And I wanted to take this moment just to share with you four ways in which we sought to respond to this as a church. Four things that we've tried to do, and it's been a, a period that's been quite intense and quite stressful, but I really believe that God is gonna use it to help shape our future going forward. So the four areas that we've seen is firstly, it's the whole area of communication and critical mass and how we've sought to maintain momentum in our ministry and, and to reframe what we do as a church. And so let me show you a few of the things that we've done through this period of probably a month and a half to, um, to respond to that. Another thing that we've sought to do pretty quickly was the whole area of content creation and online communication. And that's been very challenging for, for some of us, particularly me, but I feel that with Darren and Whistle and, and some really clever people in our church, it's just been, it's been okay. And I feel like what we're doing now is quite significant. Another area that we have sought to develop is the area of caring and connection. Given that we've been in isolation, we've had to ramp up all those systems and change the way we think about pastoral care. Have a look at some of the stuff we've done there. And the fourth area that is probably the thing that will be ongoing, and it's a paradigm shift of proportions, I believe, is the whole area of community. How do we be a community online? And um, what does that look like? Because uh, we don't have the same touch and feel that we had before. I've been praying for this period that God would use this to shape the future of our church, the future of our ministries and how he wants us to respond, how he will change the landscape of our church to respond to the circumstances, how he will clean away the things that perhaps we were doing, but now we can do it differently because we've built better capacities. 
and finally the new life that comes from that. I'm really excited about that. We've had some great initiatives start during this period which are just amazing. And there has been some disruption, there has been some trees fall down, there has been things that we've had to respond to and clean up. But I really believe that God is going to use this. And um, I thank you for your patience and your grace through this period. The Bible reading comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, and verses 1 to 3. Notes for today's message are available in the Bible app. So Hebrews, chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. The Son is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Hey, good morning and welcome to Church Online this morning. I want to ask you a question. Have you ever been tempted to give up, to throw in the towel, to quit, to stop? And in the midst of that temptation to give up, someone comes along and just speaks a real word of encouragement into your life that at that moment seems to empower you and strengthen you with courage not to give up. Uh, Maybe you've been like me, grew up playing a lot of sport and I remember being out on the footy field at times and at certain areas of the footy field where if you were going after the ball, you'd be close to your supporters, you know, they'll be on the sidelines. And, and maybe you felt like you're in a losing situation, the game's not going good or your opponent is really beating you. And then someone just screams out this big word of encouragement and just, just yells your name and says, come on, you can do it. Uh, for me, it felt like I could suddenly, when I receive and hear that, it feels like I could run a few Ks faster jump a few centimetres higher, a tackle a bit stronger. I just, you just lift to another level because that's the power of encouragement. I remember when we were battling cancer in our son's life when he was going through treatment for leukaemia and going through chemotherapy. And I remember there was a, a lovely lady, Pastor Barb, who would come into our hospital room every couple of weeks or so. And at times where I was quite down, where I was distressed, where I was you know, just struggling, thinking the wrong negative thoughts of negative outcomes, she would come along and she would just come alongside me and she would just speak powerful words of life and encouragement. And as those words went into my ears and into my heart and into my believing, something would lift on the inside of me. Courage would rise up. Faith would rise up to be able to go on and take that next step. See, that's the power of encouragement. I love the scripture in Proverbs 12:25 that says, "Worry weighs a person down, and encouraging word cheers a person up." Notice the two directions there. Worry takes you down, encouragement takes you up. I don't know about you, but I want to not only receive encouragement in my life, I want to be an encourager that lifts other people up in their life. Uh, in this season that we're in, we're starting this series today out of the book of Hebrews called Encouragement to a Church or a People Dispersed. Because we are dispersed, we are isolated, we are church online. Some restrictions are relaxing, but we still have this online experience and we recognise that during COVID-19, we're all having different struggles at times. Maybe there's some positives about it that you like about the life change but I'm sure there are some difficulties, some challenges. And in our own faith, we don't want to see people give up because we're not meeting together physically or whatever it looks like for you. The devil would love to tempt Christians to give up. And we want to encourage you through this book of Hebrews, it's actually written to a dispersed people, a people that are dispersed and they are under their own persecution. They are under their own trials They are under their own set of circumstances that is tempting them to give up, to shrink back, to go back in their journey of faith. And then this letter comes along 
to encourage them in that situation. It's like a letter that's saying, hey, do you know what? You can stay up in a down world. You can get back up in down circumstances. And that's what we love about this book and really looking forward to diving into it with you um, in these coming weeks. And we're going to look at many different themes. It's such a rich book. We want to encourage you to get into it for yourself and read it. There are many famous verses that you'll know and they'll pop up out of the book of Hebrews. Really looking forward to it. Hey, did you know the author really is unknown? Um, There's been debates for centuries over who wrote the book of Hebrews. And um, I just want to encourage us this morning that, yep, I don't know who wrote it for sure. I don't think we actually can know exactly for certain who wrote it. But what we do know is that when we come to the Word of God, we can know the author behind the author, and that is God himself, that this word is God-inspired. In fact, the author wastes no time in just assuming that his audience, probably Jewish Christians, um, would understand this. It's, he doesn't try to prove God. He just straight, says straight away, in the past, God. You know, the straight God, he doesn't try and prove his existence. He's speaking to people that would know the history of the old covenant And now he's got some encouragement for them to stay on and to keep going in the new covenant with Jesus. This dispersed people. And we're going to use this book and see what God wants to say into our lives as well. So verse 1, let's get into it. If you've got your Bibles there. It says, In the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. Um, I like what he says here in verse 1 about who spoke and how he spoke. God spoke. Don't you love that God speaks? That he's a communicator, has been from the beginning. In the beginning, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God's words bring creation, God's communication. And he spoke in the Old Old Testament through Moses. He spoke through a burning bush. He spoke through many prophets. He spoke through his servants. And none of these had the whole picture, but partial things. But then get ready, here comes the superior revelation in verse 2. But in these last days, God, he, has spoken to us by his son, capital S, by his son. The family is getting involved now. Not my servants, but my son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. God, uh, In this next passage of Scripture, you're going to see seven things that God says, or that the author says, that God is saying to us about Jesus. And I want to encourage us this morning with these seven things uh, because this is superior encouragement that you cannot get from the world, that you cannot get from self-help. This is encouragement that is supernaturally superior for any situation you find yourself in this morning. You know, uh, someone once said, no one ever went backwards from encouragement. Amen? Amen. It says these seven things. Number one, it said there that um, Jesus, he's appointed heir of all things, that he's the heir of all things. And number two, that he's the creator of all things, that he made the universe. Of course, if he created it, he is the heir. Jesus, you know, was there at creation and um, he's the creator. And then the Bible talks about he is the word of God. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. It says in verse three, the third thing is, The Son, Jesus, is the radiance of God's glory. Now, that's encouraging to me because I know that radiance, that Son, radiance, it's not saying that Jesus reflects God's glory. He is the radiance. He is that that, that sunshine that brings growth, that brings light, that brings life, and things won't grow without it. And we need the Son's radiance uh, of, of his glory, of God's glory. Basically, it's saying Jesus is to the Father what light is to the Son. And then the next part, number four, he says that he's the exact representation of his being, that Jesus shows us the very nature of God. Now, this is a powerful point. This is encouraging. If you want to know what God is like, and many people say, what's God like? Look at Jesus. Look at Jesus and accurately see what God is like. That's why reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke and John, is so important to your Christian journey because it it gets you into perfect theology. Someone once said, Jesus is perfect theology. Look at him. The Bible tells us in another letter that God is love. But you look at Jesus and you see God is love. Jesus is love, personified. 
That Jesus, when he's healing the sick, shows us what God is like. That Jesus, when he's raising the dead, shows us what God is like. That Jesus, when he forgives sinners and, and reaches out to the marginalized and, and is there for, for, to touch the leper, shows us what God is like. And many people today have misconceptions about God. They'd be very encouraged if they looked at Jesus and experienced him even better. They'd be even better experienced him to know what God is like in your own life. See, we've experienced the grace of Jesus in our own life, his love and forgiveness, and it does something on the inside of you that lets you know what God is truly like. It says then, uh, continuing on in verse 3, that Jesus is sustaining all things by his powerful word. Number five, he upholds all things by his word. His word is a powerful force. His words hold weight. Jesus is the living word of God. He is the word and his word is exactly what's causing nature to continue on. And then it says, the sixth thing, after he had provided purification for sins. That's the number six thing. He is our redeemer. There's some encouragement there that he has provided purification for sins. You know, the the point before this was about Jesus really in that sense of a prophet. A prophet brings the word of God. He is the ultimate prophet. And then purification for sins is Jesus being our ultimate superior priest. You know that a a priest would go in to the temple time and time again to offer sacrifices for sins. But Jesus is coming for the purification of sins on the cross, the Lamb of God that would take away the sin of the world once for all. And then it says, and he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. Number seven, that Jesus is our king, prophet, priest, And king, he sat down at the right hand of God. You know, no Jewish priest ever experienced sitting down because there was no seats in the temple. You didn't sit down because the work was never, ever done. But Jesus, when he ascended on high and said, it is finished, it is done on the cross and risen from the dead, and he's now ascended on high to the right hand of the Father, he can sit down and say, it is complete. And he has won the victory for you and for me, prophet, priest, and king. These are encouraging verses that I believe provide superior encouragement that will enable you with courage. When I think of the word encouragement, right, I think of two words, enabled, N, and courage. And that's really what this book wants to do is enable us with the courage to go on despite what sort of uh, trials you go through, what sort of persecution you face, uh, what sort of Uh, tragedies you go through, that your faith would stand strong, that you would not shrink back as it talks about, but you would move forward in your faith. And the way to move forward is we all need encouragement. And this start this morning is superior encouragement about three areas, about Jesus's word, Jesus's work, and Jesus's win. In fact, Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 22 really tells us about the purpose of this book. And it says this in 22, of the, uh, chapter 13. Catch his intensity, the author's intensity. My brothers and sisters, I beg you to listen patiently. Now, I can understand why he's saying, I beg you to listen patiently, because I struggle to listen, let alone listen patiently. But to listen patiently is to wait, to really hear what is being said. As you go through the book of Hebrews, can we encourage you, let's listen patiently. Let's dive in. Let's uh, be reading a chapter or so at home a day if you can or whatever works for you just to get the richness out of this book. There's some interesting uh, passages and some even scary ones, but you're going to see that there's some massive encouragement amidst some warnings as well. He says this, I beg you to listen patiently. Then he says this, on what I have said, I wrote this letter, catch it, to strengthen you. He knows that your circumstances will try and weaken you, so you need a letter that will strengthen you. And that's what encouragement does. When things are down, encouragement lifts you up. So just a a, a few things that lift us up from this morning's text is, number one is, we have a superior word. I don't know uh, what things you're allowing right now to determine what you believe, what sort of words are coming in. Maybe they're words of negativity, words of fear, 
Maybe they're words from other people. Maybe they're words from situations and circumstances. But I want to encourage you, it's the word of God that will lift you up. Because his word will not condemn you. It will encourage you. It will equip you. It may rebuke you, but it's for your own good. It's to bring you to a better place. His word's always looking to benefit you, to take you forward, not to push you down and hold you back. And it says in uh, that, that uh, our uh, first, uh, first verse there, sorry, second verse, he has spoken to us by his son. Jesus is the superior word. Out of all the words that have been spoken, he is the number one. Jesus is the word of God revealed. And then he fills us with his word because it says in the scriptures also he's sustaining all things by his powerful word. I want to encourage you, if Jesus can sustain everything in the universe by his powerful word, he can sustain you. He can sustain me. And you can trust him right now. Are you looking to Jesus? Are you hearing his word? Because as you do, it'll flow out of you. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. If it's filled with worry, worry worry will flow out. If it's filled with trust, then if it's filled with the word of God, it'll flow out. Come on, if you squeeze an orange, you'll get orange juice. If us Christians get squeezed, we should come out of our, our lips. The word of God, greater is he that lives in me than he that's in the world. Come on, God's working together all things for my good because I love him. I'm called according to his purpose. Let that word get in you and sustain you. Number two is um, Jesus shows us some superior encouragement with his superior work, his superior work after he provided purification for sin. Aren't you so glad that Jesus did not sin? The Bible says, he who knew no sin became sin so that you and me might become the righteousness of God, that his work was enough. I don't know, you may have finished some jobs in your life. You may have finished, uh, I don't know, shearing 200 sheep. You may have finished building a wall. You may have finished building um, something from Ikea. Well, I haven't because I can't build any of them things. They just drive me crazy. But anyway, you may have finished some things, but one thing you cannot finish is the purification for sin in our life that separates us from God. And Jesus has done it. He has finished the work. He has said, it is finished, it is done, and I am so glad that we do not have to work for our salvation. That's what religion is. Work, 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 earn, 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 make God happy, make God happy. It's just, it's just never-ending. Relationship with Jesus is resting in the finished work that he has done. Thank God for that. And lastly, number three, Jesus shows us in this passage that he is the superior winner. The enemy thought they had him at the cross. And three days later, Jesus got up in superiority, rose from the dead. And now he says, because I live, you will live. And we enter into that win with him. Amen. I just want to encourage you with that this morning, with whatever you're finding yourself in. Maybe you're in a season where you're tempted to give up. Maybe you're in a season where it is challenging. We want to encourage you through the book of Hebrews, don't give up, not just because we say don't give up. You need to hear a word of encouragement from God into your life. That's the word. You're not looking for a word from Pastor Brad, Pastor Craig, or whoever's speaking. We're looking for a word, the word from God into our hearts, and it's going to take mining that out and getting stuck into his word, reading this book, and then allowing it to sink in. Don't give up. And the way that we don't give up is really simply this, is we look to Jesus. We look to him. But my final scripture, Hebrews 13, uh, verse 5, part B, says this, God has said, now this is, this is encouraging, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Don't you love that? We say not timidly, with confidence. The Lord is my helper. Fancy that. I mean, I've had some people help me with things in my life, but listen, you've got the Holy Spirit. You've got God Almighty on the inside of you, your helper, the Holy Spirit. You can say with confidence, what can mere mortals do to me? What will man do to me? I will not be afraid because God is with me. And that is a great promise to finish on this morning, that his presence is with us. And that is all we need. You may, may have a lot of things that you think you need right now, but Jesus' presence is what you need to, we need to look to. As we look to his presence in our circumstances and seasons, we discover, yeah, his word is so superior to anything I'll ever hear. 
His work is so superior to anything I could ever do. And his win is so superior. All I can do is say, thank you, Jesus, and receive the win. That's what we do. To become a Christian is to receive everything Jesus has done in your life. Religion is spelled D-O. Relationship with Jesus is spelled D-O-N-E. It's done. You can't earn it. It's the free gift of God for your life. If you'd like to find out more about that, we'd love to talk with you about that. Hey, there's going to be some questions on the chat for us to discuss, but um, let me just pray a blessing over us as we uh, start this series in Hebrews. Father, we do thank you for your word, that it's living and active. And I pray, Lord, for this morning, for everybody listening, anybody there, everybody, Lord, that are, are in different circumstances, our church dispersed, would you bring encouragement that is significant and... Um, arrange directly for people's hearts and lives where they're at with what they're going through. I pray you'd help us to open our hearts up during this series to get stuck into this book, this letter, and to hear what you want to say to us. We thank you, Lord, that you are the superior one and that we can look to you and find everything we need in our time of need. So I just pray a blessing over everybody watching, everybody listening. Would you bless them mightily in the name of Jesus? Amen. Thanks, Brad, for that fantastic sermon. I love the book of Hebrews and, and I'm really looking forward to getting more into it over the next few weeks in the sermon series. Have you been blessed and encouraged today through Church Online? And I hope that you can join us again next week from wherever you're, you're joining us from. Please feel free to stay online until 11 and there'll be discussion questions that the hosts will lead you in. Can I pray for you now? Thank you and praise you, God, our Father, for this book, for your word, and for the message today. Pray that you'll bless us and fill us and give us hope. In our circumstances, may we hold fast to the faith that we have in Jesus Christ, the radiance of your glory and the one who made purification for our sin. Thank you so much. Amen.